This project is about how earthquake science education saves lives. In 2001, I saw schools in India that had recently dissolved like sandcastles from the Gujarat earthquake. The teachers I met knew little about the science of quakes. None had a safety plan. In 2004, schools buckled from an earthquake in Kashmir. There, we mobilized local partners and we sent winterized tents just before the heavy snows. We may have saved lives, but it was charity. It wasn't safety or education. On May 12, 2008, at 2.36 in the afternoon, the Sichuan earthquake leveled Dujangyan, the exact spot where we had been working to teach science inquiry methods the previous two years. We lost teachers, we lost students, and I felt as if I had lost my own family. The images haunt me still, makeshift shrines of children, classrooms without stairwells, stairwells without classrooms, pink and blue school backpacks strewn about, and it was the same recipe for disaster repeated again and again. Dense populations, shallow earthquakes, unreinforced schools, and little earthquake science and safety education. Today, 50 megacities sit aside the Earth's plate tectonic boundaries. In the last 15 years, up to 1 million people have died in earthquakes. 70,000 in China, 230,000 in Haiti. Half of the children who die in earthquakes are crushed by their schools. And the greatest victims of all, girls. One of our members, a geologist, came to our rescue in China with a hands-on curriculum she had developed for earthquake-prone Tajikistan. There, students built structures, showed how some buildings sway and others sink, and developed safety plans. Within days, volunteers translated a Chinese version. Scientists checked it for regional accuracy, and today, the program is in China, Haiti, and Central Asia. It's in six languages, and it's free. The White House connected us with USGS. Together, we're ready to connect global geologists, regional mentors, and local teachers, teach students to gather and post seismic data, help maintenance workers reduce non-structural hazards, and ensure the inclusion of girls. We can all agree that our children's future requires a firm educational foundation, literally and figuratively. They need to feel safe, and they should learn how to stay that way through science and safety from below the ground and up. Girls can be both scientists and safety leaders. So on behalf of the teachers who've benefited from this program and the girls who will learn from it, thanks so much.